Hi, everyone, and welcome back to Multifamily Foundation. And it is Monday. It is my favorite day because it is Mothers of Multifamily. I am so, so excited. I have Candice Pilgrim on. Welcome, Candice. Hey, thanks so much for having me on. Thank you for coming. I'm so honored to have you on. Folks, ladies, Candice is the managing partner of Apollo Capital and co-founder of the Multifamily Women's Mastermind. And we're going to jump into that mastermind. I'm so, so thrilled that Candice and her partners put this together. Prior, though, to founding Apollo Capital with her husband, Casey, Candace built a successful electronics wholesale business with over $7 million in annual revenue. She holds a bachelor's degree in both biochemistry and microbiology. Boom. Candace and Candace's analytical skills and systemized approach allow her to excel in underwriting, due diligence, asset management. Prior to discovering her passion for multifamily, though, Candace rehabbed and self-managed a small portfolio of single-family rental homes in Alabama and Mississippi. For the past two years, she has been focused on building a multifamily portfolio to create a passive income stream that will transcend generations. As both an active and passive investor, Candace has invested in over 600 apartment units in the southeastern United States and has built a strong network of multifamily partners and advisors to aid in future acquisitions. And this is the most important part. She currently resides in Birmingham, Alabama with her husband, Casey, and her three-year-old son, Carson. Welcome, Candace. <laughs> thank Yay. you. I'm glad to be here. Well, thank you for coming. So the big question is, and that is, I mean, biochemistry, what? <laughs> <laughs> how, how do you do all that? You've grown this amazing business. You're up to 600 units. You, you invest actively and passively. How? do you do all of this? Oh, super mom. <laughs> well, <clears throat> I think the two big things that I have to remind myself of mm -hmm. would be quality over quantity and let go of mom guilt. So I'll expound upon that a little bit, but uh, first I think I need to give you a little context. So my son Carson, he's three, as you said, he's in daycare Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So mm -hmm. I always try to schedule most of my meetings, um, calls, any property tours on those days. And then Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm not saying I don't work, but you know, I try to make those days more flexible, be at home with him more, bring him with me, you know, kind of make those his special days other than the weekend as well. So another thing I want to point out, I know I only have one, but my Carson is a mama's boy and he <laughs> Not, I don't say this to be negative at all, but he is the world's clingiest child. I love it to death, but you know, if he were here, if he were not in daycare, he would be in my lap and trying to Perfect. grab the computer. So um, <laughs> next time, next time I have you on, I want Carson to be here. Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. He would love it. I mean, he would tell you all about his animals. He loves his animals. So well, we were just talking about this though. Like, and this is for all the mamas out there. Don't say the word only. Children are relative. Like you said, your, your son is mama's boy. He is your son. Nobody else wants to, nobody, he doesn't want to go to anybody else. He is, he is special to you. And it doesn't matter whether you have one child, two children, three children, a whole family of adoptive children. As long as you have the responsibility for another human life, Mm -hmm. it's, it's like, it's, it's mind boggling. And that's, that's what this podcast is about. I want to wrap my head around. And for all the mamas out there that have ever asked me that question, how do I get it done? I want people, I want ladies, I want even fathers to understand this from amazing women like yourself. So I'm sorry I interrupted, but I had to say that it's never only it's relative. So your story is going to be different from anybody else's story. So let's hear it. Yeah, so definitely, I understand what you're saying for sure. And, you know, whether you have one or five, or like you said, a whole family of adoptive children, you can apply the same principles. Yes. And, you know, the quality over quantity, as I was uh, speaking to, I think that's one thing I've had to learn over the last three years, is it's not about how much time I spend so much as it is about the quality of the time I do spend with him. 
So, you know, maybe if I were a stay at home mom and didn't, you know, try to run these businesses, I could spend every second of every day with him. It would be more time. But I think as long as the time I do spend, I'm emotionally present and I listen to him and I focus on him and I'm not, you know, off in another world thinking about everything I have to get done that day. I think that's what's really important. So that's one thing that I've strived to do is make sure that when I do spend time with him, you know, I'm there. And then uh, follow up on that. It's, as I said, the mom guilt, we all know about the mom guilt, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, we've all experienced it, no matter how much time or how high quality of time we spend, we always think we could do more, mm. you know, we could do better, I'm going to regret it, you know, because he's only little for so long, I need to be spending more time, but I've had to let go of that, you know, I've had some other ladies I've had this discussion with in the Women's Mastermind Group, and, you know, we've talked about how you just have to let go of that, and you have to remember that What's important is, you know, Carson sees how hard I do work and it's important for him to see me work hard and to build something and to make something successful because that's instilling that value in him. So I think for me, it's just as important to have him see that than have me spend every second of every day with him. So I've had to let go of that. And I think I've, I finally am feeling successful with letting go of mom guilt. <laughs> So how do you let go of mom guilt for, for all the mamas out there that are just like entrenched in that feeling and you and I both know what that feels like and how, mm -hmm. how do you let go of that feeling? Well, I think it's about um, calculated time too. Like if you, I know a lot of people that are probably listening time block because time blocking is important. And that's one thing that I did to kind of uh, justify, is not really the right word, but to make me feel like that I'm making sure I do set that time aside for him every day, what I would do is um, every morning he'd wake up at 6.30 and from 6.30 to 7.30, that was his time. Like we would go in the living room, we would, I would play dinosaurs with him or play animals. And from 7.30 to eight, you know, he would eat his breakfast and I would eat with him and make sure I spend that time with him. But then the day, you know, I'd take him to, to school if it was a school day and from then on, like I work, you know, from on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, that, that's when I get all my stuff done and I make the most of that time. But if it wasn't for that time blocking, I would always be wondering like, you know, did I spend that time with him today? Am I doing enough? So that's one way I guess I let go of mom guilt is to make sure I do set that, that time aside for him, even if that, it isn't a school day. That is a fantastic answer. That's like the best answer I've gotten so far from so many moms is time blocking, making sure, and I do the same thing, making sure that the time you block for your children, you are completely present. Like you said, you put your phone down. You don't think about that multifamily deal that you have going on. It's still going to be there tomorrow, hopefully, yeah. hopefully. If, you did it, if you did your numbers right and you... <laughs> put all the, your action steps in place. We'll get back to that later. <laughs> um, that will be there though. Like the time that you have with your child won't. So you time block that time and it sounds like you have it set that you have some morning time, you have some afternoon time, but that block of time that you say, can this work? How do you stop yourself from being like, oh, I should be, I don't know, daydreaming about a uh, uh, trip to Disneyland <laughs> like how do you stop yourself from going there I mean it's hard I'm not saying I'm perfect with it you know I could definitely improve um, on the time blocking especially now that uh, as of this week um, Carson actually dropped naps so he's no longer taking a nap during the day wow. um, and that has changed his night schedule you know he's, he's going to bed a little bit earlier but uh, more importantly he's sleeping later in the morning so it's kind of messing up just this week, the 6.30 to 7.30 time. So he's still kind of all over the place because I'm sure you know like when a child drops naps, it's not like just one day he takes naps, one day he doesn't. It's kind of somewhere in between right now. So um, I'm sure come January we'll have to kind of um, redo our time block schedule and figure out something else that might work since he's sleeping later. We, won't, we may not have that time and I'll have to figure out somewhere else to work it in. See, but that's fantastic. Sounds like something else that you do is you're flexible. Yeah, you have, to be. Right? you have to be with kids. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you make sure that you keep an open mind that you leave room for that flexibility? Yeah. Another thing um, that kind of goes along with your question, you know, I'm, I'm a very type A type personality. So uh, going along with that, I stress out easily sometimes and like I can get overwhelmed when I have a lot on my plate. Um, one thing that 
I have on my background of my phone right now is a quote. And I wanted to share the quote with you and all the That's other moms nice. listening because it's, it's, it's very important to me. Uh, the quote goes like this. It says, when little people have big emotions, it's our job to share our calm, not join in their chaos. So that's one thing that when I spend time, when I spend that time with Carson, I always remember, and that's why I have it on my phone because I want to see it every day because I'm the type that can easily lose my patience when he's having a meltdown over something because I'm already stressed out and I'm like, ah. Can you, know, you so. say that quote one more time? Because that hit my like my deep down heart spot. Yeah, it's when little people are overwhelmed by big emotions, it's our job to share our calm, not join in their chaos. Oh my goodness. That's yeah, it's big. Terrible. You have to, we, you know, you have to really think how they're feeling and they can't, you know, little people can't handle their emotions. You know, it might be something simple like the wrong color cup, but to them, it's like the end of the world, you know, and they don't know how to handle that. So I have to remember, you know, he's not like doing it to be mean or to be, you know, to make my life, you know, more hectic. He's doing it because he, he needs help. He needs a hug. You know, he needs somebody to just understand and, that's one thing I've tried to do is just, you know, give him a hug and look him in the eye and say, you can talk to me. You know, I want to, I want him to know early on in life, he may be three, but first of all, he's very advanced for a three-year-old like mentally. Mm -hmm. He, I feel like he's, you know, six or seven sometimes with some of the things he says, but I, I let him know early that I'm there for him. You know, I want him to, to be able to confide in me and talk to me. And, um, you know, that's, that's one thing that, that I make at a point of in our time, even though it may not be as much time as I would like, that if I'm emotionally present for him and I'm there for him, that's, that's what really matters, I feel like. That is, I mean, everything you just said there is so key and you just, you actually just gave me personally so much value because so many times when your children are having those meltdowns and you're just like, oh my goodness, why are you screaming about having six chicken nuggets when your brother has seven <laughs> yeah. because I know you're not going to eat them all <laughs> but it's in those moments that you're right we're the adults here we have to bring our calm we have to teach our children the right, right way and we have to give them a hug and maybe that extra chicken nugget even if they're not going to eat it <laughs> so thank you for that oh my goodness so before we wrap up a couple more questions the first one being, if you had one bit of advice to give all the mamas out there that are trying to get into multifamily or who are in multifamily and are just like under the pressure of everything that they're learning, that they're doing, one bit of advice that gets you through that pressure, what would it be? Hmm. I would say one day at a time you know, one step at a time. It's so important because if, if you think out long-term, like, well, these are my one-year goals or five-year goals, that's great. You know, I do that as well. And I have my goals, but it's easy to get overwhelmed trying to figure out how you're going to get from point A to point B, you know, with a family, with all these other obligations. And it, it can just get so overwhelming. So I think what's important is as long as you're making progress every day, even if it's just a little bit of progress, it's one step closer and you will get there. You know, you will meet those goals. Just uh, stay persistent and stay positive. That's what I would say. My other question is, let's go to the multifamily women's mastermind. You uh, chat and why is her name escaping me? Michelle. I just had Michelle. her on here. Michelle. Yeah. I'm Michelle. sorry, Michelle. I know you're listening to this. <laughs> so Michelle, chat and you put together this amazing group in the exact time when I know, and I know a lot of the women multifamily, successful women multifamily out there are listening to this and are having the same thought that we were all having that thought. Like where is a group just for women that we can go and talk shop in, I don't know, a womanly type of way. And you guys, like all of a sudden I go on Facebook and I'm like, what's this? And how can I be a part of it? Like, <laughs> I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm like, can I be a part of this? Who are you guys? Let's, let's talk. <laughs> like, I, like, I, like, it was like, you like blasted onto the scene and you've been instrumental in helping women find a safe place to discuss, find a place where they know they can grow with other women. 
what gave you the idea? What sparked this idea? And how did you, how did you take the step to create it? So I think first I was talking with chat about this and I had met chat back in um, May in Denver at one of Rod's, Rod Cleef's events. Mm -hmm. And I, I was talking to her about it first about how it'd be so cool just to have like a, a women's group of active multifamily investors um, to all share, you know, our journeys with each other and support one another. And that we kind of left it at that for the moment, you know, we had things going on and it was just kind of like a thought we had talked about. And then I met Michelle when did I meet Michelle? I think it was probably June or July of this year. And we had the same conversation. So, you know, I told Michelle, like, I was already talking to chat about this. You know, we, we need to make it happen. So the three of us hopped on a call and um, we made it happen pretty much same day. I think we came up with um, all of the plans for it, the name and um, Michelle, Michelle did our logo. She is very talented at, at making visuals like flyers and logos and stuff I like that. It. She handles all that for us. And, we made it happen and we've been super pleased with the results so far. Well, it has been, like I said, it's been instrumental. And for all you ladies out there that have not jumped into this group, it's the Multifamily Women's Mastermind. Look it up on Facebook. You need to be on there. You need to talk to the women there. And it's like, it's a group of women from all different other groups because I'm gonna let you know that I had women from the like that have learned from Michael Blanc, have learned from Joe Fairless, have learned from all these big name mentors, all talked about the same thing, all talked about putting together something for women, but you guys did it. So awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesomeness. Last question. Okay. <laughs> How can women, how can people find you if they need more information about what you do, what you're about, where else can they go to? You can find me on Facebook, um, Candace Pilgrim. I'm very active on Facebook, but not so much on the other social media platforms. So Facebook's enough for me. And you can also email me at Candace at Apollo Capital Investments.com. Perfect. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Candace, for coming on. I'm I think I'm a better mom and a better investor for this, for this call. So thank oh, you for thank you, you. For you. I appreciate it. And thank you everybody out there who's listening. I am so grateful. Thank you for listening and I'll talk to you later. Bye now. Bye.